Alright, this is the third tutorial in the series. This time I'm going to show you how to material and texture your scene. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to select the plan which we use to build the room and I'm going to hide it. Right click, hide selection. The second thing I'm going to do is change the basic materials of the walls and ceiling to white and a V-ray material. Uh, it, as you can see, the material now is standard, not V-Ray. So I'm going to change this to V-Ray because it's faster in render time and it works better with the V-Ray renderer. Now I'm going to change the diffuse color to white, but not 100% white because it can create overburns. So I'm going to choose 245 on 245 on 245. So it's almost pure white. Now every single uh, object in the scene is assigned to this material, the default or one default. The floor, the walls and the ceiling. I'm going to change its name to white walls. And I would like to paint one of the walls in this room a dark bluish color. So I'm going to click and drag this material here. I'm going to change the name to dark blue walls and I'm going to change the color to bluish dark bluish and desaturate it so it would be more gray than blue maybe like this and darken it to this level alright so now I have a dark blue wall I would like to assign it to my uh, object the wall object I'm going to choose polygons and choose the polygons I would like to paint this color Control click. If you want to unselect something, alt click it. So we have this one left. And on the top viewport, I'm going to choose the windows themselves. Now let's see, we didn't choose anything we don't want. It's fine. Going back to camera view. And I'm going to assign dark blue walls to these polygons. As you can see, we have white walls, white ceiling, and dark blue wall. Now, the floor is also assigned to this material, white walls. We're going to fix this now. We'd like to create a parquet, a wood floor. I'll call it wood floor. I'll change the material to V-Ray material. And in the diffuse slot, I'm going to put a texture. A texture is just a JPEG uh, picture, or it can be anything, it could be JPEG, it could be PNG, every uh, picture format is fine here, almost every. I'll click on bitmap and I'll choose the texture I download from the internet. This is the texture I download. You can download e every texture you want from the internet, I will include this texture in the comments below, but you can use any texture you would like. So I'm going to double click it. Now as you can see, when I double click on the sphere here, you can see the texture. I'm going to change it from sphere to a box because I would like to see it in box form. Now you see the, the texture of the wood. I'm going to apply this material to the wood. Assign material to select it. I'm going to select this and this and assign. Now as you can see, I have a gray floor. The reason it's gray and not wooden is because I need to go inside the material I just selected and click here, show shaded material in viewport. If I don't do this, I would see this color and not this material. So now when I apply this, you can see the floor, I'm going to isolate it, the floor is brown reddish. It's not the texture itself, it's only the color of the texture. And the reason for this is because my UVW map on this plane is not set correctly. So I'm going to choose a modifier called UVW map. Once I click it, you can see the texture on the model. I'm going to the top viewport. You can see the wood. Alright, now I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because it's too big to be a real parquet, maybe 250 or 250. I think this is fine. 
all right? Okay, let's go to the camera and isolate everything and try render this. You can already see the white ceiling and walls and the dark bluish wall. You can also see the parquet floor, which is a little bit too dark, I think, so we'll brighten it up a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Or, you know what, it's fine, we just need to up the lights a little bit to fit the darker colors of our room. So I'm going to up this to 7, I'm going to up this to 7 also. I'm going to up by 2 each and every one of the lights. Now to choose only the lights, I go here and lights. So now everything I select will be a light. This one is 5, this one is 8 maybe, and this one is 8, and 8. So every one of them I just upped by 2. Maybe I'll up this one a little bit more too, something like 6 and the light from the sun to 0 0.09 now let's try to render this okay it's much better, it's brighter I don't think I need a brighter parquet because uh, parquet floors are they can be dark so it's fine as you can see there is no bump in the floor so when you have these uh, separators from one block of wood to another you need to have a bump so like a hole in the middle in order to create a bump map what we need to do is we need to take this texture we downloaded from the internet and put it inside Photoshop or any other editing, uh, picture editing uh, software so now what I'm going to do is turn it black and white black and white now I'm going to go into curves and I'm going to no this is too much I'm going to brighter up the image a little more bright Now what I'm doing here is uh, creating a bitmap uh, for the bump. Uh, the reason I'm doing it black and white and uh, brighten it up is because the way the bitmap works is it takes the picture I put inside the bitmap slot and it uh, checks where the black areas, the dark areas are and where the bright areas are. So the dark areas are going to go down, the bright areas are going to go up. So that creates the, the bump itself, the up and down in the material. So what I'm going to do now, I need to create a map which has the most contrast for the bitmap to, for the bump map to work properly. So let's do it even brighter than this. And lower the contrast a little bit. Maybe curve editor, which I, I go to adjustments and curves and strong contrast this is fine alright alright so now what we have is black lines and white with a little bit of grey inside for the bitmap I will help, help it along a little bit by painting black lines where I need them so I'm going to change the color to black and I'm going to paint black lines I'm holding the shift button after I press the first uh, click on the mouse so that the line no matter where I go in the picture is straight I'm going to shift click and go like this I'm going to help out the map but you know what, this is too thick the separation between block to block is very thin so I'm going to do it again this time with 
thickness of one. So only one. Shift click. All right, this is much better. Going to create this line. find almost there Let's see what's left not so much one and the last one here at the end of the bitmap. Now you can see we have our bump map. I'm going to save this. Let's save this on the desktop. Let's call it wood bump. Highest quality. And now let's go back to max. Now, as you can see, let's turn back to a circle. As you can see here, we have no bump map yet. So let's go back up to wood floor. Let's go to the maps rollout and click on bump. Let's click on bitmap and choose the bitmap you just created, the bump map. Now, you can see the difference. It really bumps out. The lines we created for the separations are like holes between the woods. So let's try to render this in a little bit higher resolution this time. Higher, not lower. Okay, and let's try to render only the floor area. Zoom in. You can see there is bump in the floor. You can see the separating lines better and it looks way more realistic. Especially in closer areas you can see the bump map very very well. Alright, so now after we created a bump map for this we're going to add a reflection to the floor because this floor has no reflection as of yet and uh, you can't see this but when you start uh, putting uh, furniture on it and you won't see the reflection from the furniture on the floor it will be less realistic this way so cancel the render and let's create put the view here so the box of the render will be disappearing. In the VRA material rollout you can add reflection here. When it's black it's totally non-reflective. When it's white it's like a mirror, you can't even see it. So let's start with a little bit of reflection, so maybe like 40. And let's add the background to the image so we can see the reflection on the floor in the material editor itself. You can see the reflection is way too strong and it's reflecting like a mirror. It has no blurness to the reflections. Uh, to see the reflection in the viewport we need to put an object here. Let's click Auto Grid and put it on the floor here. And when I render the image you can see the reflection from the white background in the exterior from the HDRI map we put and you can see the reflection from the box. The reflections are, themselves are way too strong. 
We need to lower them way down. I'm going to stop this now. We need to lower the reflection, and I'm going to use a function here which is called Fresnel Reflection. What this does is it uh, creates reflections depending on the viewing angle so it's like in real life when you look at a glass for instance from straight uh, straight forward you don't see any reflections at all uh, as the radius of your view becomes higher uh, if you look at the glass from a 90 degree angle you can see a very strong reflections so this is what it, this simulates a strong reflection when you look from the side and a very weak reflection when you look from uh, straight forward now we have a we have a, like a 30 degree angle here because you're looking from the camera from the camera to the floor so the reflections are going to be less reflective That's, but you can up the reflection by very very uh, very very big uh, reflective uh, number that's because the viewing angle Fresnel reflection makes the reflection less strong let's try to, to render this now it's almost the same but the reflection I put here is 200 and before it was something like 30 so let's leave it on 200 now I don't want the reflection to be like a mirror, I want it to be blurred out because the wood blurs out reflection, it's not uh, mirror like. So the blurness comes from here. The one is unblurred at all like a mirror and zero is way blurred, it's no, almost no reflection at all. So let's put it something 0.8. Now you can see the reflections are blurred out. It's You can't exactly make out the box. If I render now, we'll see what I mean. You see the lines are not straight as they were, they are blurred. You can see the bump uh, very well here. The bump map we created. You can see the reflections from the box starting to appear here. You see the, the floor is reflective. The bump map is very strong here. It's like a hardwood. We'll lower the bump map in a second. And you can see the reflection of the box on the floor. It's blurred out, which is great, but it's not blurred out enough, and the reflection is too strong. So let's fix this. First thing we'll do is lower the bump. It's on 30, let's make it something like 10. Bump map is less strong now. The next thing is lower the reflection value. Let's lower this to maybe 90. Alright, this seems way better, maybe even less. 80. And the blurriness of the reflection, let's make it 07. So it's blurred out even more. Alright, way better. Now, if I leave the scene as is, and I will render it, you will see the floor and the reflection of the box on the floor, reflection of the HDRI map from the exterior, uh, falling on the floor and reflecting, but it will be very soft and wood-like. So this is the scene with the materials applied. We can see the walls we created and the floor with the reflection from the box.